Generally, when one thinks of a blacksmith, a burly bearded man comes to mind. But Anne Bujold, a metal artist at the Appalachian Center for Craft, breaks that stereotype. She proves that the age-old craft of blacksmithing knows no gender and no boundaries. And she creates beautiful works of art that bring the world around us to life. Metalwork is really hard, and I think that I have a real innate stubbornness that's attracted to the like the challenge and the difficulty in the material. And I, I think there's something very appealing about taking this very hard industrial material. A lot of the forms I'm interested in are organic shapes, flowers, and animals, and rendering these in this material that's very hard. But you know, with steel, when you're working it hot, it's very plastic. You know, it's kind of like clay; you just can't touch it. So it has this amazing capacity to kind of move in these different states, and being able to move metal around with a hammer is, is sort of just a really cool thing to be able to do. It's super fun. My first degree, I have a liberal arts degree in social sciences, and I graduated and then was out of school for a few years and found out about Oregon College of Art and Craft through a few people I know who've gone there. And I decided that I wanted to make jewelry. So I went there, I started in 2004, and I had no art background at that point. And it was in my second year that my friend Elizabeth started and she had taken a few blacksmithing classes. And she was like, you should try some blacksmithing. And I was like, oh, I don't even know, people are blacksmiths? Like, what's a blacksmith? And like, you, you know, like women are blacksmiths? Like, I had no idea. It's not anything that had ever crossed my mind at all. And we ended up applying for scholarships, and we both got these scholarships that summer to go to a place called Haystack Mountain School of Craft, which is up in Maine. And then I took another class at Penland, which is in North Carolina. And so that really started my love of blacksmithing and forging and getting into this heavier metal work. I'm working on a project with some people called the Society of Inclusive Blacksmiths. And we had our first event in August of last year out in Government Camp, Oregon. We brought 11 professional women blacksmiths from across the country. We had one from Australia. We spent three and a half days on a collaborative project. We built a sculptural bench and did sort of the, had the conversation that's led to the formation of this organization that's working to change people's perception of what a blacksmith looks like. Because with the popularity of Forged in Fire, and some other things that are going on, like everybody thinks blacksmithing is about weapons and tools and big bearded men like hitting hot metal, but it's really an amazing sculptural process. It has a lot of other applications and we want to help facilitate bringing a broader community to the craft. So that's something I really care a lot about and being like a good role model, showing people that anyone can do this kind of work. It's not just for big burly men. My process is kind of, is a little bit based in research, so I'll kind of I'll get interested in an idea, and I'll want to find out more about it. Like you know, I got interested in coyotes, so I was reading books about coyotes and wanting to find out more about them, their history, our history, and relationship to them. So for me, my art practice is kind of a way to explore the world rather than just a reaction or like a desire to express something. So I'll kind of get an idea and then I go through sketching and ideation process and then I'll start building things. I'm very definitely very process oriented where um, it's about the making itself. I do a lot of sheet metal forming, it's something I'm really interested in. And then more recently I've been interested in material history and combining different materials, looking at the, the very gendered history of blacksmithing and ironwork and the fact that it's a very masculine field. And then I started incorporating fiber and I was doing some felting and looking at bringing in different materials to kind of think about like what are the gendered history of these materials and these craft traditions, what does it mean to bring them together and how, does, how can that operate in maybe a new way. If I'm making a sheet metal object, I'll make an armature out of a quarter inch round stock or smaller material and then I'll make a paper pattern Then I use those paper patterns to cut the material out of sheet metal and then go through a forming process. 
through my graduate school research, I got really interested in the idea of animals that are kind of crossing the boundary between the urban and the rural, and how certain species are really thriving, in particular coyotes or raccoons, deer. Although now living out here in rural Tennessee, it's like I feel like I'm in their home rather than the other way around. But um, so I was really interested in these in-between spaces and what happens uh, like on the edges of things. So they became a metaphor for exploring those ideas. We have the tools and technology to make all these processes a lot easier, so it's not all about physical capacity. And I think a lot of people are intimidated by power tools or some of the things that we do, but learning these things just gives you a better sense of how the material world works, and I think it's very empowering to learn those kind of skills and that, have that kind of confidence and confidence. So, um, yeah, anybody could do this.